Okay, today we're going to have a look at the structure of the DNA molecule, and we've we've had a bit of a look at it earlier in the year, but um, we're going to have a bit of a, a look at it in more detail and have really have a look at what how it's made up and the structure of the nucleotides and how it fits together and how it replicates. Um, we we often see these fantastic diagrams of um, of, of DNA molecules, big, colourful, swirling uh, molecules that, that look quite complex, and we're, we're going to explore uh, what they represent and what they mean. So the starting point for us today is to consider that the DNA molecule uh, is actually a polymer. It's made of lots of monomers or units, uh, and in this case it's a nucleotide. Um, so each one of these little uh, units that that's, makes up this big long molecule, um, thousands and thousands and thousands of units long, um, is a nucleotide. So let's look at them. So the basic structure of our nucleotide uh, is that it, it's made of three parts. Uh, the first part is this pentose sugar, and pentose meaning it has uh, five carbons in it here. One, two, three, four, and the fifth one sort of sits up about here. Um, it also has a phosphate, and the phosphate and the pentose sugar um, are the parts that form the backbone of the molecule. And the third part is this nitrogenous base. And these are the bits that we know are different uh, between the different nucleotides and have our, have our four different types of bases, which we'll look at in a second. So just looking at the complicated view of these molecules, we can see that the, the sugar molecule in the middle here, this pentose sugar, which can be deoxyribose sugar in the case of DNA or ribose sugar in the case of RNA, this is made of carbons and hydrogens and oxygens in the ratios that we expect to see in a carbohydrate. The phosphate molecule here has a phosphorus and oxygens, and this nitrogenous base has lots of nitrogens in it and has um, has different, slightly different structure depending on what sort of base it is. The one in the picture here we have is adenine. So before we look in more detail, let's just have a look at the, the, the differences we touched on between uh, DNA and RNA. First off, DNA is double-stranded and RNA is single-stranded. Uh, DNA is deoxyribose and RNA ribose. Uh, it's just a slight difference in, in, in the, the makeup of those uh, two molecules. Uh, I think the DNA has one less oxygen, meaning deoxy. Um, the bases, well they're basically the same, there's just one difference. RNA has thymine instead of uracil. So guanine, cytosine, thymine and adenine uh, for DNA and the only difference for RNA is instead of thymine we have uracil. Now we know that the um, there's base pairing um, between the different nucleotides. Um, they, the A's will only bind with T, and the C's will always bind with G's. And I remember that through uh, good couples always together, G with C and A with T. Now really that's because of the hydrogen bonds in between the molecules. There's, there's probably, um, they line up correctly for two hydrogen bonds between A and T and three hydrogen bonds between C and G. And I suppose at this stage it's also worth pointing out that these hydrogen bonds are a lot weaker than the other bonds that we're having in the molecule. Uh, all those covalent bonds, the strong bonds between the, um, the, the sugars and the phosphates um, and the other, other molecules that, that ma are making up those parts of the nucleotide. Uh, these bonds in between the two nucleotides, these hydrogen bonds, are the weaker bonds and the bonds that are easiest to undo. So when we look at our structure of DNA, if we imagine it being laid out flat, um, it has this ladder-like structure. Uh, and we can see that there's um, a, a backbone down here of sugar molecules, of our de uh, deoxyribose sugar, and we have our phosphates here. So we have sugar, phosphate, um, with this whole structure here, with the nitrogenous base being one nucleotide, and then underneath it, another nucleotide. We can see that there's a weak hydrogen bonds between the uh, two rungs of our ladder. These could be that considered our two rungs down here. And there's weak hydrogen bonds in the middle. Okay, And that allows our molecule to unzip um, and replicate, um, which we'll look at later. It's also worth looking at that these nucleotides can be considered to be purines or pyrimidines. Um, and a purine um, is basically a double ring structure, and that would be adenine or, or guanine. And the pyrimidines um, 
could be cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Okay, and they just have a single red, uh, ring structure. Um, and the purines always pair up with pyrimidines, and pyrimidines always pair up with purines. Uh, that's just a, a, another sort of um, level of knowing about these nucleotides. Uh, one way to remember uh, which are which is the pyrimidines are made of molecules that are either C, U, or T. And that's the one with three. And the ones with three make a nice pointy pyramid and it spells cut. And some people like to think of um, a, a nice pointy pyramid being able to cut you. So CUT are the pyrimidines. It also helps to think of the, the, the pyramid that we're, that we're drawing here, this triangle, just being a single ring. or um, you know, So pyrimidines are a single ring, CU or T. Um, hopefully that helps. So looking at all this in a diagram to, to finish things off with our nucleotides here, uh, each one of these nucleotides um, is one unit, one monomer in the polymer. The phosphates and the sugars form this backbone structure. Um, the nucleotides in DNA sit in the, in the middle of this ladder and there's weak hydrogen bonds between them. Uh, there's complementary base pairing between them. And it's these nitrogenous bases that make the different nucleotides uh, different. So what we need to do is actually think about the orientation of, of these molecules. Um, and the orientation of the molecules that make up a, a, a nucleotide is determined by the carbons there. And the carbons in a, these pentose sugars um, are numbered from the, from the nucle the, the one that attaches to the uh, nitrogenous base, and they're numbered from there starting from one. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, and the fifth one's out here. It's actually an oxygen in there. So the fifth one's out here. Um, now, so the fifth one is attaching to the phosphate, and that's part of the same unit. The third one is attaching to the other other uh, end of the phosphate, um, up, up here, I suppose, on the next molecule. And so there's an orientation of the molecules. There's a five prime end and a three prime end. Okay, and that's going to be important when we think about how this DNA molecules are built. So let's look at that. This on a, a molecule of DNA that we we're looking at before. If we just consider, if we just consider ourselves having one molecule here, if we had a um, a nucleotide to go to join on, it's not going to be able to join like this. Uh, the orientation is going to be very important. We can't join them in the wrong order. The, the two phosphates here aren't going to bind together. Um, so we can line it up, but we need to actually orientate this molecule the correct way. So when we bring in a molecule that's sitting the correct way, uh, we have a bit of a different situation. We have this end of the sugar able to bond to the phosphate. Um, and likewise, we can build another one here. Okay. Um, th this level, this, this mo um, part of the, the sugar molecule can bond to, bond to the phosphate. So let's just look at what we know about from our numbering system already. We have these molecules labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, and we know the fifth one sort of sits up there. So we know that this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end. And this will be a 3 prime end, 5 prime end, and away we go. All right, and the molecules are all sitting in that orientation. Okay, a very important concept for some of the things we're about to cover. So looking at that in our molecule here is what we happens is, is that we have one strand here that goes from three prime to five prime, and the other strand which is sitting the opposite way, it goes uh, from down the bottom five prime to three prime. And, and again, that's a very important consideration when we, we look at how these molecules are made and how they uh, replicate. Uh, we describe this as the strands um, being anti-parallel. Okay, they're not par they're anti-parallel. One's going up, and the other's going down. Okay, uh, the orientation is different for both strands. So anti-parallel. The, the strands are complementary, but anti-parallel. 
Again, a neat version of the diagram, probably better than what I scribbled down before, um, shows the orientation of the actual molecules, 3' prime and 5', prime, and it shows the opposite thing happening in the, um, the parallel strand. So let's just look at uh, the structure of this molecule in more detail. Now, we, we've drawn it pretty well in a two-dimensional version, that flat sort of ladder uh, with... Um, with anti-parallel strands. Now, two two guys actually, um, Watson and Crick, um, they 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 um, discovered um, oh, probably pretty close to um, pretty close to 50, 60 years ago, discovered the actual three-dimensional structure of DNA, and it's that structure that we know so well, that double helix, that spiraling um, sort of structure. Um, and they did that through molecular modelling. Um, they didn't just have a, a, a look at it through a microscope. Uh, the molecules are obviously way too small. Um, they were able to um, build um, models and know the orientation of particular um, molecules in, in that model uh, to, to visualise what it might look like. A great discovery. So it forms this, what we call a, a, a double helix. Now a helix means to spiral, and a double helix, it means there's two strands spiraling. So um, it's complementary strands in a double helix. And you might also now add that they're anti-parallel. Here, here in our structure here, we can see these blue bits here would represent the sugar and phosphate backbone, that really strong backbone weaving around, and we can see the two different strands in the middle, are, they, are these almost these bridges or rungs in the ladder that are formed between these base pairings uh, between the um, for example here seeing that the base pairing between the A and the T the adenine and the thymine so we can imagine a two dimensional um, structure that we're quite familiar with now um, being twisted around um, to represent the, the double helix so what we can see here is a full organisation of the DNA molecule. You can imagine um, these strands of the double helix having a specific code, a specific sequence, um, you know, really millions of, of nucleotides long for each molecule. And uh, it, it's these strands that are then formed in this double helix. This double helix strand is then coiled around these proteins called histones. And these histones are then organised, and these are helped used to condense and further coil uh, this DNA, DNA molecule and, and, and wind it up. And it's, it's this that then has a specific way that it's wound into the chromosome, uh, with each particular part of the DNA molecule having a particular spot on the chromosome. And that's what forms our, our genes. Okay, so there's several levels of organisation that go about creating the chromosome. Uh, which is just really a really long DNA molecule. Okay, good luck with learning about uh, the structure of DNA. It's going to be um, really important to understand this structure in detail before you, you look at uh, DNA replication.